Okay. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Battle of the Beast. This is battle number 76. This is the second to last battle in the entire tournament. And as you know, if you've been watching along with the series, we're down to three, three beasts remaining. Inferno, the Fire Dragon, Crestor, the Crushing Terror, and Torpix, the Twisting Serpent. Let's go on this side. Uh, all three of these beasts, I think, have deserved to make it this far. And looking at all the beasts they have slayed throughout this entire tournament, some were obvious victories for them, like Torpix versus Tagus, and some were a bit hard to decide for Victor, which, um, for the sake of um, convenience, uh, I need to think of one, probably, uh, I don't want to get haters, but this was the closest one out of all of them I could think of, Crestor versus Servio. That was the closest battle out of all of the battles that each of these beasts had. Um, but with that being said, we're down to the final three, and as you know, I don't do one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one battles, so one of these beasts have made it through to the next, to the final, to the grand final, uh, by doing absolutely nothing, just being a lucky beast to make it through. Uh, give me a bit, give me a couple seconds so then I could get my um, statistics up, so then I can know which beast slayed what, because I honestly can't remember for the life of me. But, as you can probably tell by the title, you know which beasts in the grand final and which two have to fight it out. The beast that's made it through to the grand final is Crestor, the Crushing Terror. I'll go on this side. Crestor, the Crushing Terror. To have this as one of the final books to make it there, um, with only six kills in total at the moment, I think it's an alright achievement. And for beasts that only had probably one battle in his area or terrain that he was made for. That's pretty impressive. It Crestle deserved to make it this far. Um, I wouldn't say to the top two, but <laughs> apparently so. Uh, and I'm only saying it deserves to make it this far because it won five battles not being in the terrain it was supposed to be in and won one against Lustor, which could have easily won as well. Which leaves Ferno the Fire Dragon versus Torpix the Twisting Serpent. This is going to be the only Battle of the Beast video I'm uploading today because um, my good friend Lucas is creating a new intro for the Grand Final and I'm guessing due to how long it's taken uh, it's going to include the names of the final two beasts and uh, it'll be like Crestor, the Crushing Terror, versus Torpix or Ferno, whichever one wins this fight. Um, anyway, statistics as a quick reminder. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it, it's just to make this video even more longer and more boring than it already is. In round one, Ferno killed Fang. Round two, Linker. Round three was... Um, who did you kill in round three? Uh... Yeah, round two was Linker, round three was Tremor, round four was Elik, and you skipped round five. Torpix, however, killed six beasts, and round one it was Skurik, round two was Tagus, round three it was Madara, round four it was Serpio, and round five it was Rock. Wait, six kills? I meant Torpix may get six kills if uh, if he beats Ferno. Ferno will get five kills if he beats Torpix. Uh, I don't think I need to say this anymore. Whichever one dies, that series comes third place. Um, it's pretty obvious. Um, it, wait. Oh, Torpix killed Ballisk as well. Wait. I said Serpio for Torpix, didn't I? Okay, I meant Ballisk, not Serpio. Crestor killed Serpio. <laughs> The videos are right next to each other, battle number 17 and 71. I got a bit confused there. Oops. Okay, um, for the terrain, I'm thinking of a... Uh, you know, I think I just need to give this kind of terrain to both the last battles, this one and the next one, as it's a rather even terrain, given no BC advantage or disadvantage. 
So I'm going to go with a plain barren terrain like I did with the last episode, which was Torpix versus Carnivora. So Torpix is in two consecutive day battles in a row. Okay, um, well done. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I need to say. Torpix and Inferno. May the best beast win. And which one will be joining Crestor in the final round? Or as Lucas very well said in the message he sent me uh, this morning, saying which beast is through, he said, uh, Torbix vs. Inferno and Crestor awaits the victor. Okay, so, um, yeah. Before we get into this battle, though, I, I shall repay this by making this a really good battle. If you didn't know so already, back in the days when the tournament has just begun, it was episode 2 when it was announced, and um, I said the it was originally planned, well, for Lucas anyway, to have Silver in the top 2. And it was um, kind of unfair for the simple reason. Like, for Silver kills Trillion, and then Silver goes straight from round 1 to round 7. I'm just I'm just sat there thinking, no, no, that's not fair. Let him die by Serpio. <laughs> uh, let's let him earn his way to the top two, like all the other beasts had to have to. So yeah, that's what we did after a long, arduous debate, and uh, I won that debate. So <laughs> uh, Lucas still pissed off at me that Silver dies, but. Um, if it helps Carnivore and Vespic died, so it's about even losses. Um so yeah, uh Silver is not in the top two, thank god, because that'd be really unfair for just skipping round two, three, four, five, and six. But um actually would it be six rounds that he'll would it be five rounds that he'll be skipping or would it be four? Like if you take away one beast, I don't know what that would be. I'm not sure. Needs to think that through. It, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's get right into this battle. As I said, a plain barren wasteland of a combat arena. Okay, so let's get into this. Okay, as both beasts exit from the chambers, Torpix goes through the front door, Ferno leaves through the sky door. And as he always does, um, and since he can't really find a place to camouflage himself, his rock disguise and ability does absolutely nothing. It just hides from the opponent, but honestly, if Torpix can't see a giant rock, Torpix does not deserve to be in the final. <laughs> okay, but anyway, um, Ferno sees Torpix straight away and breathes a fireball of fire straight towards him. By the way, Ferno is the larger beast, Torpix is the second largest, and Crestor is the midget out of all of them. Okay. <laughs> Ferno straight away shoots a fireball directly towards Torpix. Torpix sees it and coils himself out of the way to dodge it just in time. He feels the heat um, on, the, on his back, like not on his back, but coming off the wall which it hit radiating onto his back I think that's the word I'm not sure I need to shut up and get this tournament underway okay uh, eight minutes in and the battle started and we're already a minute and a half in Torpix slivers up to under Ferno coils around as low as he could go then launches himself up keeping his tail on the ground and bites down on Ferno's leg pulling Ferno down to the ground and um, whilst he, whilst Torpix does that, when he gets slow enough to the ground, he lifts his tail up to wrap it over Ferno's um, neck and pulls that down to the ground, pinning Ferno down. He releases his grip on Ferno's leg and, um, and uh, pins Ferno's tail to the ground, keeping Ferno, basically Torpix is coiled up around Ferno pinning him to the ground, making him unable to move. Ferno trying to move his neck around, because this is a familiar situation to him, uh, with his last battle, Elik doing the same thing. 
uh, apart from this is Torpix and doesn't have the lightning powers, but still. Um, Ferno is a, just tries to shake his head free and um, stabs Torpix with his horns on his, and spikes on his neck and head, uh, causing Torpix to release his grip on the neck. Ferno lifts his head up, turns around and breathes fire onto himself. With him, his with his scales being fire resistant, it doesn't affect him at all. Torpix um, is slowly feeling the pain, so he um, slivers off um, Ferno, just to spit acid directly at Ferno. Uh, Ferno counters that with fire, and um, what I said in the Lost Soul versus Shamani fight, uh, when Lost Soul's acid came into contact with Shamani, it exploded. But that's um, to do with the fact that the acid that Lost Soul had was more solid like than Torpix's <laughs> I think that's the word um, God science has just gone out that window uh, just like but the light just came back in so okay so light came in science gone out okay um, so it just collide the acid and the fire goes straight into each other just splattering everywhere um, doing absolutely nothing. The acid that lands on the ground starts melting away some of the floor. Uh, Ferno is unaffected by it as none of the acid has touched him. But whilst Torpix was strikes in Ferno with that, he sneaks, uh, he slivers his tail to under to get to Ferno's uh, tail, wraps around it and pulls it back, causing Ferno to get jolted backwards and just stop breathing fire for a second. As quick as he could, uh, Torpix unravels his tail around Ferno's tail and wraps his tail around Ferno's neck, constrict and pulling himself back, constricting Ferno, uh, basically strangling him. Ferno tries to breathe uh, fire to um, at Torpix to make him let go, but Torpix has enough excess tail part, extra tail that was wrapped around him to... Um, have it slide up to Ferno's mouth and just wrap around it and pull, shutting it completely. Ferno is unable to attack Torpix with the fire. And what Ferno does, he lifts his wing up and scratches at the tail that was wrapped around Ferno's um, mouth. Uh, Torpix had to let go of Ferno's mouth because that would hurt if you got scratched by the um, claw that's on Ferno's swing and um, Ferno quickly opens his mouth again and breathes fire at Torpix. Torpix not wanting to get burned alive lets go of Ferno as quick as he can and slivers aside. Ferno follows him, not really but just moves his head in the direction that Torpix is slivering, breathing fire everywhere and <laughs> This is an interesting battle, actually. I'm actually glad this was a matchup. I want both of them in the finals, but I only need to give. I had to give the finals to one of them to go against this thing. Um, but uh, I don't even know what animal crest was based off. Um, but um, eventually, Torpix gets uh, a bright idea, and he stops suddenly. Was the fire that Furnace breathing out is coming straight towards him? And Torpix ducks down just in time to avoid that, slivers backwards, turns his head and spits acid directly at Ferno. Ferno sees this, but it doesn't have enough time to dodge it, so he quickly moves his wing to block his head. It hits his wing straight away, dissolving the uh, levery part of it. <laughs> Ferno roars in pain and agony and breathes fire all around him like um, the dragon did in How to Train Your Dragon, the big behemoth dragon in how training dragon did to so just burn everything around him torpix is unable to dodge that because you try dodging that and um, <laughs> uh, you'll be a star if you do but um uh, torpix was not unable to dodge that what no, was not was was not no, was able to dodge that no was unable to th there we are was unable to dodge that and he got burnt all over him but torpix is still kicking Ferno is obviously enraged. His eyes show it because his eyes are red. Uh, 
Um, and Inferno gets up and charges straight towards Torpix, uh, ready to just pin Torpix down. He does, but Torpix is able to wrap his tail around Inferno's body, pinning Inferno down towards him. Basically, his wings are forced into his body and his claws are so low down to his chest along with Torpix's chest that he can't move that and his tail is just a little bit waving around it is out of reach of Torpix. Inferno um, just opens his mouth and ready to bite at Torpix but Torpix saw that coming opens his mouth and spits acid directly into Inferno's mouth with him unable to defend himself with his wing or anything Inferno has to take the acid, um, and it goes right down his throat, into his stomach, uh, melting everything along the way. His tongue, his fire that he was brewing up, but that just got overpowered by the amount of acid that went in there. And everything inside Inferno is starting to dissolve straight away, and Inferno suddenly just slumps down onto Torbix, loosening his grip. Torbix uh, pulled Inferno off of him. And to make sure that the job's done, Torpix um, spat ton, uh, spat one more load of acid on Ferno's head, just Ferno's head, melting the horns, the mouth, and everything on that head, going down to the body, down the neck, down onto the body, melting that down completely. Ferno, obviously motionless, uh, has died. The winner of this battle is Torbix the Twisting Serpent. Torbix will be going against Crestor in the final battle. Inferno, however, has lost. Now, I really hate to say it, but um, <laughs> uh, both of these beasts, Torbix and Inferno, are very worthy candidates of making it this far in a tournament. I'm really glad that one of them did. I saw one of them making it to the top five at least to the top five um, when I got to the top ten and I saw the other one making it to the top five when um, the top 20 came like, I was like okay that one's obviously gonna make it there and that one's obviously gonna make it there as well Crestle that it just surprised me that I made it that far but <laughs> but yeah if you think Furner should have won please in the comments below why you think that it was probably one of the closest battles I can possibly host Unfortunately, Torpix did win uh, the majority of the time in my head. And with that, because there's one key aspect. Uh, even though Inferno's scales are fireproof, and Torpix's, Torpix's scales along with Crestle's scales are acid-proof, most, the majority of scales are also fireproof as well. Like, um, all dragons... Uh, even outside of Beast Quest, are fire resistant, and uh, but not many of them are acid resistant. Whilst um, uh, let's say uh, I can't think of anything, but um, there are some. I mean, well, hold on, is simple nature actually? Reptiles that have scales, or pretty much any reptile, are cold blooded, meaning um. They live in hot environments, meaning they can take a hot temperature, whilst, let's say, myself, can't, I can't. So, for that reason, I had to give the victory to Torpix for the simple reason. It had a way to defeat Ferno, and Ferno did have a way to defeat it. It just wasn't good enough. It was a really close battle, though. I know uh, Lucas wanted Ferno to win ever since Sultra dies, and... Um, Pretty much the only person I had to comment on these videos saying who they think will win has lost their favourite to win as well. Uh, but with that being said, and that was a 20 minute Battle of the Beast episode. Oh god, and 8 minutes of it was an intro. And with that being said, that's all for this time. If you like what you saw or heard, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that little notification bell down in the corner below, and I'll see you in the final battle of Battle of the Beast. I don't know when it will be. Where it'll be Crestor, the Crushing Terror, versus Torpix, the Twisting Serpent. And until then, I'll see you next time.